new tools, who dis? <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. Uh, I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the new Citadel tools that they released here. It is 2022, and the last time they put out a set of tools, well, I guess this isn't technically a set, but the last time they revamped their tool line was 2014, and we actually, that was one of our very first, I don't want to say very first, but I would say maybe one of the first 20 videos we ever did on this channel, <laughs> which is kind of wild when you start thinking about it. Uh, but, um, and it, it's been an extremely popular video through the years. So I'm hoping that uh, we do our, uh, our best with this one so that folks will continue to uh, check out what we think of their tools here. So not only are we gonna show you these tools straight out of the box, I, I've already used them all and, well, and played with them a bit. Um, and I'm ready to give you some, give you some ideas and some insight but also I'm gonna show you really good alternatives to these as far as price point and functionality, I suppose is good. But just to run down the pricing uh, real quick, the mold line remover is the cheapest of all of them. It's $25. Then we've got the drill, the pin vise or drill set, whatever you wanna call it, $35. The knife is $34. And the super fine detail cutters are clocking in at a whopping $50 US. So let's just start with them because I'm sure they are the, the hot button issue for folks uh, that are just like, why the heck would I spend $50 on a pair of clippers from Games Workshop? Now, full disclosure, the last pair of clippers they did back in 2014 was these gems right here that I still have to this very day because they are they are very good. They still, they still cut extremely well. Um, and as you can see right here, like, I mean, it's not, it's not like the best cut and it's not like the worst cut either and here's my eight dollar clippers that i don't even remember where i got these from like harbor freight these actually in my mind cut better and they seem quality wise they're thinner blades right here uh and they're designed to cut steel because i'm not even going to tell you what i bought these for originally <laughs> to do either way um these actually have a better cut in my mind than these ones over here but these ones over here have very very smooth uh, clip and flow they have the full like I know this is full steel you know it goes the length the full tang as they like to call it the the length of the handle right here so I doubt these are ever gonna break do I know in a year that these are gonna break yeah probably but you know what I'll just buy another six to eight dollar pair giving that preface let's take a look at this pair right here which you know there's clippers out there that different manufacturers make that cost you know 50 60 70 dollars you could look at God hands uh, nippers and some of the other stuff coming out of Asia designed for some of that stuff um, But they have a thinner gate point and by gate Well, I guess I can't really show you here But where the part connects where the gate connects to the part is usually a lot thinner now I've already clipped this a bunch, but this is a good indicator and I can't get in there because my light This is a good indicator of what the gate on a lot of GW models looks like right there, right? So kind of keep that in mind um when you're like, hey, what am I going to cut on this, okay? It really just comes down to the task and purpose for what you're using. Now, looking at these clippers right here, I can tell that there is steel going all the way through. And honestly, they kind of look like, it almost looks like the same divot. They use the same mold almost. It almost looks like they use the same mold to create these. Now, these kind of go together a little bit more. But they're definitely the same family of tool sets right here. And these, I don't really notice much difference in the front here. Like, I guess, I guess that could, because there's a bigger divot, so that could get in bigger places. But this feels just like this with some rubberized grips instead of these steel grips right here, which I guess I understand, like, do, using double steel probably costs more money. Um, so let's see what this feels like clipping it through. I mean, it does it does cut it does cut very well and creates a very flat surface. Sometimes when you clip things, it creates more of a like a like a carrot, like a carrot notch, you know what I'm saying? So this is for sure 
a better clip than both of those other tools I had. But I feel like I'm just clipping stuff off sprues. So like if I was to say, hey, do I need that sort of clip to do that? When I'm just gonna get really close to the part anyways and still have to take my hobby knife and get the little nub that's left, you know, or my scraper or whatever. Um, I just don't feel like that justifies the price on these, at least for me. I mean, maybe you guys are like, hey, $50, that seems like a really high quality product. Yeah, it's 100% a high quality product. I mean, full tank steel here, it's got definitely a lot, a lot, um, uh, well, it's got that super fine kind of um, indent here, so you can get really close into the parts with the divot right there. So I could see that. I mean, quality wise, this is a good tool. I would be very confident that this would not break. It's, a, you know, it's already, um, got some lubricant in here as well that should probably last a, pretty, a good long while. I mean, I still got lubricant on the inside of these too. So, I mean, this is what that premium product looks like after about eight years. It's seen, it's seen some better days, but it's still functional. And I would still use these for another eight years to be quite honest before I spent the money on another set of these. So I don't feel like it's bad um, quality wise. I'm just a little concerned about the price of those clippers right there. It just doesn't wow me as much to just be like, oh man, I really need to buy that. Now, speaking of knives, let's talk about knives for a minute. So obviously you can get, you know, when it comes to clippers, just to summarize what, what we just saw right there, um, you can pretty much get clippers for like eight bucks and be fine. You know what I mean? Cause you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna get in there, you're gonna clean stuff up a little bit closer. Now this is really interesting cause it's not the length of a normal uh, exacto blade. Of course, I don't have any exacto blades close, which is weird because, I, well, I probably purged a lot of them because I didn't like them rolling around on the table. And after I got one of the alternative products, I'm going to show you here in a second, um, I really kind of purged my whole collection. So I do like that it has this little cap on it, but this really doesn't do anything because you know, what's the point of having this on here if you're not gonna have a blade on it? And I don't think it's gonna, it's big enough to fit a blade. Well, let's find out. So these are our special type of blade. This isn't your standard number five. It's not super special. You can still get refills of these from Amazon. I mean, I, I have probably a pack of 100 blades around here somewhere. Um, now this plastic, it seems pretty well done. I'm not entirely sure this is steel in here. This might be some sort of amalgam plated alloy thing, maybe maybe a zinc with a some sort of coating on top here that I can't exactly tell what it is, but it's it's definitely not steel. I, I would I would definitely dispute that. <laughs> uh, it doesn't feel like steel, it doesn't handle like steel. Now you put the blades in here and then you just tighten it up. Uh, I think it's this way, righty tighty and you're good to go right there. Now, what is nice about this, and it, it, this is a nice hard plastic, it seems pretty good quality. What's nice about this is you've got a little place right here to push down for pressure, which is always an issue when you have an exacto because a lot of times the, the chuck right here is right, that is up there, and then you start doing stuff and then this becomes loose and boom, you start cutting into things like your hand. <laughs> that really shouldn't be there for that. So I don't feel like using this, I would never lose control of this tool, right? So let's take a look. Let's just right here pushing down. Oh man, that is not a sharp blade. Okay. So you could put pressure there, but um, I don't know, those blades don't, don't seem like that very sharp. I do like the fact that it is back heavy here. So it feels like if you drop it, it's going to fall here on this instead of straight into your foot, which let's see, let's, well, there wasn't enough space there, but I'm wondering here, let me, let me drop it over here off camera. Of course, it actually didn't flip. I just dropped it about six feet. Let's try it again. Well, that it landed on its side. The, the other thing, and I'm not, let's do it three times just to be sure. No, it went straight down. I dropped it straight down, it went straight down. I'm not exactly sure that's a that's a thing. Um, I wouldn't be confident that that is not gonna stab the crap out of my foot. But the, the thing I do like about this 
is it's not round. You ever notice all those exacto blades? It's always a round shaft. And what's the first thing that happens when you're on an uneven surface? It rolls off and stabs you in the foot, right? So this isn't, it's flat and it's got a nice divot here so you can have a lot of control over it, which I don't doubt would be a thing um, with this particular tool right here. However, uh, does that justify the price of $34 and kind of, I don't want to say special order blades, but non-standard blades. Wow, this thing really jammed in there now. I'm going to have to get my... Oh, we're going to have to fix that. Anyway, so that is that particular day, um, product there. Now, if you're looking for something different or a better alternative and haven't heard of the Monument Hobbies knife, I've showed this to you in the past. Uh, I think I might have done it just on the socials. We didn't do a full video on it. This thing is dope. Now, I'll be straight up, up front with you. This is a white branded... A product it's originally a Nova blade it's a crafting knife um, my mom's used to have these along with Fiskars she loved that stuff um, so I immediately recognized it and you can actually tell too because the blades say Nova on them you can get blade refills for Monument for five or six bucks I always I always tend to order them uh, from them you can get a big a big box of them off Amazon um, I don't think it's worth it because you know just support your local retailer in the hobby here monument hobbies does such good things they don't try to rethink a, a better product out there if they see a better product they white label it and they sell it themselves which i think is pretty smart now what i like to do with these is i'll put an x on one that contains all my broken blades and then when this fills up i'll just throw it away so it doesn't stab me or the, or the trash uh, collecting folks in the feet and then i always have one that i'm always using as refills there now also speaking about price the the nova blades a dollar cheaper than the monument blade one and i mean why, why buy it from them when you can get it from monument and supports the support a really great uh retailer here in the hobby it also has that really cool design where hey it's not going to roll off and stab you in the foot it has a retractable blade which some people you know don't like at first also if you use this and you get any glue on here and when you retract it it will probably stick in there so be very careful with that uh, ask me how i know I've, I've ruined a blade like that to replace uh, and put refills in here. It's very easy. This is technically a non-standard number five because it's got the, the punch in it. But like I said, they sell the refills um, and they're not that expensive. So I've never really had an issue or anything like that. Now, as far as cutting, um, what's cool about it too is you grip up here. You don't grip back here. This also has, you have to kind of push in to move it. So in theory, although I probably broke mine at some point, um, you can't, oh, there it is, it locks. Uh, so if you're up here and you grab it, it won't lock. But if you put any sort of pressure towards the back where it depresses, that will be an issue for you. Um, but like I said, I don't think, see that's so much sharper of a blade. Holy cow, those ones that came with these. This is a fresh one and that was a fresh one. So I don't know. That's just, that's just mind boggling to me that I couldn't do that with that GW blade. I mean, I literally sliced through this with like this butter and I didn't put that much pressure on it. Like, I don't know why those G-Dub blades are so bad. Uh, okay. Anyways, so yeah, this is a whopping $10.99, $10.99 for Monument Mount Hobby. So check it out. I'll put some links uh, in the description and the comments so you can uh, check those out. Uh, real quick before we move on to the next product, I just cleared that out because I wanted to tell you if this was a blade guard and it is a blade guard. So you can put a blade in there and put this on there and you won't stab the crap out of yourself and you can transport it around, which is uh, kind of nice to know. Next up, we've got the mold line remover. And I got to tell you what, like the first mold line remover they put out in, what was it, 2014? That thing changed my life. I mean, you can see I've used this quite a bit over the past eight years, probably the most out of any of the hobby tools I bought. This was a very sturdy product. You know, it's got the, the double steel, you know, full tank steel, and then it's got the steel handle right here with the star screws. Um, this is just a really good quality product. My only complaint was that it didn't have a thinner uh, kind of uh, area up here so you could really get into those hard to reach areas. Um, they put out one of these that was very similar. It came on a keychain. Then you could also have a little bottle of glue. And that was cool, but it wasn't quite the same as this one. Um, but it was super thin like this. So now we have the mold line remover. Uh, this one is $25. I think it's actually cheaper than what this was back in the day. Um, I want to say that thing was, I want to say it was 30 bucks, but I couldn't tell you for sure. So immediately when I open this up, it looks, 
it looks really bad quality because you see this fade like it it's like the the plastic was exposed to some chemical and it automatically faded it maybe even made it like um well not as strong uh like some sort of like you can see there's some sort of haze or or, or great uh crazing all over it which probably is not good um so i'm already a little on the fence here now the grip itself is is uh semi rubbery it's comfortable for sure and it's got these little divots very similar to the knife but it feels very cheap like it doesn't feel doesn't feel like this at all like it feels very cheap and i'm just looking at it now i can already tell that the steel is not straight so it's already bent from the factory damaged plastic or crazed plastic or i don't even want to know what you call that and the the steel itself is bent of all things so you know if i was just to stand in a gw store and buy this let me see if I can. Even, this is a full tang of steel. I could feel it moving and, and building, and which is good, but it's not straight whatsoever. It's almost like maybe it needed those other pieces of steel to keep it straight. I don't know. Um, yeah, if I was to buy this at a GW store and be like, "Dude, what the heck?" and uh, <laughs> you know, I'd be a little upset about it, I suppose. Um, do I have any plastic GW models? I don't. Uh, what about non-GW models? Well, let's see what we can pick up pick out on this let's see if there's any mold lines here that needs some shaving <sighs> I can tell you what <sighs> I need to not have my models out as much because they got cat hair all of them um, don't see anything there let's see about these guys Hydra agents I'm striking out oh here's a cool thing to use so one of the features on this is it's got this little notch and you can scrape the bases. So even though this base is in from GW, this is super helpful right here to get those nubs off because the nubs, the bases a lot of times do come on sprues and they'll have these little nubs on them, which is a little frustrating. And that cleaned off pretty good. I wish there was a little area of detail. Well, let's just pretend. All right, yeah, that's pretty smooth. And I can get in there and those hard to reach areas. That definitely is helpful. So I definitely like the ease of use with this, whereas if I was using this one, yeah, getting in there would be a little bit tougher. So I like the new, the new size of this. I just, looking at it, it just looks like crap. <laughs> I'm sure this, I mean, look at the picture. Like it doesn't, it looks like it's, it, it looks like it's a, uh, gothic or what is it heroin chic version of uh of this you know like i don't get it oh well anyways that's the mold line remover i mean it's a cool it's a cool tool do i need to buy this you know uh to replace this one right here i mean not really if i really got to get into somewhere super close i'll probably just use my blade but if somebody starting out was like yo let me get that that might not be a bad buy for them but it just doesn't feel very uh it just doesn't feel very, like a very high quality product. It's not, it doesn't feel like a premium product for a premium price, I suppose. It's got some neat features, but I'm not sold on it. And then last but not least is the drill slash pin vise. So again, the drill is $35 US. And getting it into my hot little hands here. It feels like pretty cheap plastic again. A lot of that going around looks like this little spinny thing is attached with a washer and a, a screw back there um this chuck i imagine yep unscrews pretty much oh so this faux steel this isn't even steel this is some sort of alloy painted or plated to look like metal it's definitely not it's very oh we can tell right now if it's metal or not because i have a yeah not metal at all this feels like junk if i was a little bit stronger i would make a boast that i could crumple this in my hand but i'm not <laughs> and i definitely couldn't but uh but it's right on the cusp but i feel like i could make that boast 
uh, this is just junk plastic at that point. I don't feel like there's any sort of value whatsoever with this. Um, all right, let's get this back together. So really dissatisfied with the quality of this. Uh... Oh, we gotta screw this. So righty tighty. And plus it doesn't have multiple chucks that you can adjust. So you're pretty much stuck to the diameter of whatever drill bits they gave you here which this should slide out and it should be inside. Yep. So we've got some decent sized drill bits here. But let's see, so we got a little piece of brass rod. So say we needed to pin something, could we with this? Yeah, we could. So your standard brass rod would probably work, even your paper clip. Let's find that paper clip I had earlier. Paper clip, paper clip. Yeah, it could pin a paper clip too. It passes the brass rod and paper clip test. However, uh, you're not gonna be able to go much bigger, unfortunately, with uh, anyways. That's not good, why is that not going in? Did I break it? Did it not go through? That's not good. I feel like this should just keep, or did I put it in the wrong? Is the chuck the wrong side? Yeah, okay, that's what I did. It has to have that area to go in. Okay, yep, there we go. That's on me. All right, so. Righty tighty, and then we get that. Let's try to drill into a base. So, I can spin it. This almost, these wings on here almost feel like they're giving me more resistance than they should. Cause I'm trying, I'm just trying to spin it, you know, resting it in my hand because this is the spinner. And it almost feels like this is, I mean, it's giving me a little bit more leverage, a little bit more torque uh, because I'm able to get wider right there. But I, I feel like it's hard to go fast with it. That's a little frustrating. Um, but it's not. I mean, if this was, you know, normal price, 10 to 15 bucks, I wouldn't be mad about that at all. But the price, but how much is this? $35? Yeah, I just, I just don't see it. Like it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like, a, a, again, it just doesn't feel like a premium product to me. Um, when you're asking those kind of prices, you immediately become a pre premium product. Unless they're just considering it's worth that because it's a Citadel on it, which I would dispute uh, wholeheartedly. Anyways, um, so, I don't see anything different than using these tools right here, which I probably paid less than 10 bucks or right around 10 bucks for. And I already have three drill bits already set up to go. I've got a, a small like bolter, a small weapon, a big weapon, and medium weapon, like bolter size weapon right here. I even have a little pin, a little thumbtack to do pilot holes uh, so that I can guide these into it. And this just feels a lot like when I use it, yeah. So when I use this, I can just go fast, see? I'm just cranking here on this. I'm really getting it where you can't right there because of those wings. I don't really like those wings on there. Now, there's another product. Now, these are like, like I said, eight to $10 maybe tops, maybe, maybe 15. I mean, maybe the, I think the Army Painter one comes with more bits for 15 bucks. And the cool thing about a lot of these, and I don't think the Army Painter one does, but you get, like in the back, you get storage room for, well, I don't have any in here, for your extra chucks. So you can have extra chucks and you can go bigger, you can go smaller on your drill bit size on these, which is nice. But I already have two of them set up, so it doesn't matter. But what I wanted to show you here was this thing I discovered recently uh, called the uh, Wow Stick. And at first I was like, this is kind of stupid. There's no way this works. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's actually pretty dope. Now, if you're gonna spend the money on some, 35 bucks on something like this, you might as well put another $15 with it and go ahead and get you something that's motorized. It's gonna make your hobby time a lot easier, in my opinion. It's gonna come with, it comes with this little like case here, which is kind of nice, not, not super ridiculous or anything. Um, but just the fact that you can, let's, let's drill out a bolter real quick. Let's take one of our, there, let's do that. So let's pretend we're gonna shave off a bolter and drill it out. And the best thing to do 
regardless of if you're using a battery powered or this is a rechargeable or you're using your regular ones, you should always take either the end of your knife or a thumbtack like this and kind of pin right where you're gonna go. Put a nice little strong indicator right there and see if you can come back and find it and put a strong indicator to where that drill bit needs to go. Find the right size drill bit because I've never used these before and I'm thinking this one right here, which is yep, probably what I have set up already. Hey, look at that. And this, these are super easy, quick, quick attach on the wow stick here. Super nice. And let's see if I can get this on camera pretty good. We're going to, it's got some extra gear ratios for torque in there that I've noticed. You don't want to hammer on it, <laughs> even though this looks like it cuts through plastic just fine. You want to treat it like your spray paint, you know, you just kind of hit it and then let off and then hit it again. But yeah, that, <laughs> that definitely will get it done for sure. Wow, check that out. That is a nice clean hole in like two seconds of time. I didn't even have to like cramp up my hand or nothing. Um, another thing this is good for obviously is pin vice or using uh, pinning stuff. So imagine being able to drill out to do a little pin. I recently have realized that uh, some of my magnets I use from my Marvel Crush Protocol figures uh, were a little bit too big. So I switched to a smaller size uh, because I've been ripping some of the models off when I go to grab them out of their bins. And unfortunately, some of them have broken at the feet and I've had to repin feet. And this thing has come in very handy of doing that um, and repairing those. But like I said, it's basically $50. I think they're on sale on Amazon Prime right now uh, that for a limited time or whatever. Uh, they, they do make a screwdriver set. It doesn't have, it, it's cool because it has LED lights in the front, but it doesn't support these. You need the extra gear ratios for the torque in there in order for it to work right. Um, I tried this on a resin as well. Uh, it works fine. You just want to remember to kind of give it a little pilot hole with the with the thumbtack or something like that. Yeah, it's 50 bucks. It's a little ridiculous. It's a little over the top. It's a little bougie. It will save you time. And I feel like if you're going to consider spending 35 bucks for something like this, you might as well put another $15 a year. Your sunk cost at that point, you might as well just go all in, I guess. Uh, and, and scoop that up. So I'm gonna keep that on my uh, on my on my station right here as well, um, just to have it for quick quick drills and to make a, a little less pain of a of a of a process when you go to pin something uh, because nobody likes pinning anything. Let's be real. All right, so that was a wild ride. Thanks for hanging in there uh, with me on this. Uh, uh, so I said a lot of things. I used a lot of words. Um, me personally, my opinion is. I would never buy these. Like, I would maybe buy this one. I think this is probably the most useful out of all of them. But seeing as how I already have one, um, I think, oh, and actually, no, you know, I forgot to mention this. I have a Monument Hobbies scraper, which, yeah, it's not gonna get in there or in, in the uh, fine detail areas quite as well. And yes, this, was, this is basically looks like a dental tool. Uh, but it's really great for Space Marine shoulder, uh, shoulder pads and things like that, any curved surface. So I feel like with this and the mold line one I already have, I think I'm good to go. But if I didn't, I'd probably buy this and none of the other ones there. But that's not to say that it's not worth it to you, of course, because if you don't have a really nice set of clippers, um, these might not be that bad for that. I, I can't really say good things about these two products over here. They just seem inferior in general and to the, to the products already out there on the market you know, for more than less, <laughs> way over half the price. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, just vote with your hobby dollars. If it's a value, you buy it. Uh, you know, that's, 
I don't want to poo-poo them, but like I think I've given them a fair shake as best I could. I just don't see the value in in these at face value, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. But hey, everybody's hobbies are different. Don't let nobody tell you how to hobby on your own toy soldiers, right? At the end of the day. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for hanging in there with me with this long-winded video. I uh, super appreciate everybody that watches these and you know interacts with us on all the social media platforms. Um, uh, so thank you guys uh, so much there. Uh, you can always get your hobbies for less from Amazon, Dicehead.com, and hopefully your local game store as well. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at Patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikey bits.